Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our Father, we are praying, O oh Lord, that you use our resources that you are placed in our hands, in our churches, to send the gospel light, blessed gospel light, to all that are asking us to bring the gospel to them. Use us, Lord. Cancel selfishness completely from every heart, and let there be the sacrifice of love. In Jesus' name, we pray. This moment, we are talking about Jesus once again. We are talking about Jesus this time as a great provider. We are looking at Luke chapter 22, verse 35. Luke 22, verse 35. And he said unto them, When I send you without pause and script and shoes, like ye anything, and they said nothing. Here Jesus Christ reminded his own disciples. He was about to go away from them. He had sent them out on a short-term missionary journey. And he sent them out two by two, that they will go to the people of Israel and seek and save the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But now he was about to leave them. He will be sending them no more on a short missionary journey, but on a permanent missionary work. He will be telling them they will receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon them, and they will preach the gospel. They will be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. And should in case any of them should be thinking, where would the resources come from? He reminded them of the past, so that they will know what will happen in the future. Because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he provided before, he was going to provide in the future. That's why he said, did you lack anything when I sent you out without pause, without script, without shoes? And then they said, they lacked nothing. It's wonderful then to serve the Lord. Scriptures confirm and the history also and experience they all testify that he will provide and he will supply all our needs and the needs for his work that's why we're considering jesus christ now as a great provider there are three points we're going to consider number one our supply from the lord our supply from the lord number two our sacrifice of love our sacrifice of love and number three, our sufficiency in the Lord. Number one, our supply from the Lord. He supplied all their needs. In fact, there was a time they needed money. And then he told Peter to take a hook. And then he went to the riverside and said, The fish you, cast, uh, you are able to catch, open the mouth and take the money. And go and pay for yourself and myself. If he did that at that time, he can still provide today. Many times we think we need a reach so that the work will be provided for. You will remember the time of a farming in the land of Israel. God said unto Elijah, I have commanded a widow woman uh, to supply your need and to feed you. And so even though we feel that our regions are poor, our states are poor, our nations are poor, yet in the midst of that poverty, the Lord can supply adequately for his work. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 to start with, but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You might say we're speaking to the individual. That's the way we think. Because whenever we read this passage, we always quote it to the individual. But do you know he was telling the church at Philippi, he was saying, you are a church. You have ministered to my need. And I'm assuring you that God will supply your need as a church. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If he was able to do that at that time, he's still able to do that today. And he will do it in Jesus' name. We do not plan on the basis of our resources. We plan on the basis of the resources of heaven. Verse 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. As a church, of course as an individual we can. And as a church we can and we will in Jesus' name. In uh, Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We know that he is the shepherd of the individual. The bishop and the shepherd of our soul is also the shepherd of Israel and the shepherd of the whole church. And so the church can testify, the Lord is my shepherd, because of that I shall not want. It's just like uh, what uh, Abraham was telling his son Isaac. Because Isaac knew that everything was ready for the sacrifice. The only thing is, where is the lamb, where is the ram for the sacrifice? And the answer that um, 
uh, that Abraham gave, he gave that answer by faith. And the same answer we're giving today, Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. And then so they went both of them together. He had not seen that ram, and Isaac didn't see that ram. God himself will provide. He'll provide for himself. He'll provide for the work that he has given us to do. Can he give the work and not give the means of spreading it? Can he give us Jesus Christ and not give the means of publicizing him? Can he open the door in Africa and they said we are the people they are waiting for and then they will not give the means? That's not the way God operates. When he opens the door, the means and the things to use in getting through that door, he will also give unto us in Jesus' name. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. Here we're told about the Lord Jesus Christ, about what he has done for us. Chapter 8, verse 9. Here it says, For ye know, we know, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that through his poverty uh, ye might be rich. Will be rich in Jesus' name. Jesus Christ, our Lord, is eternally rich in all things. The rich cannot be in communion with the poor unless he ministers to their necessities. We were poor. We had nothing. He was very rich, eternally rich. He could not have communion with us without sharing his riches with us because there would have been and uh, a kind of chasm, unpassable God between us. But because he loved us and he was going to have fellowship with us, he left his throne, he left his riches to come down to us so that he can raise us from the dunk hill and from our poverty. For our Lord to have fellowship with us, he had to impart his own abounding wealth unto us. And through his love and sacrifice, we now possess salvation. We have eternal inheritance. His gifts to us are beyond measure. He gives, number one, abundantly. Number two, he provides constantly. Number three, he provides readily. And then number four, he provides generously. And so as you go back, there will be abundant provision for you. And the constant flowing of the riches from, his, uh, from the kingdom will be coming to you. And it will be ready at the time we need it. And it's going to give us generously. We go to point number two now. Our sacrifice of love. He makes the supply. And he gives unto us. And then we now have the sacrifice of love. In Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then were all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live shall not henceforth live unto themselves, but to him which died for them and rose again. We're not to live to ourselves anymore. In fact, what do we tell individual Christians will say, if you are really born again, then your heart has been touched, your pocket will be touched, you will not be living for yourselves anymore. But the same thing we tell the individual, we need to tell the local church. The local church will not be living for themselves anymore. A local church will not spend all their money upon themselves. A regional church will not spend all their money on themselves. And the church in the state will, will not spend all our money on ourselves. The same thing at the headquarters here, if he has died for us, we die to self. We die to personal consideration. We need this in our church. We need it in the other church too. And we're not going to live for ourselves anymore. And therefore it requires sacrifice on our part. In Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6 verses uh, 10 and 11. Hebrews chapter 6 verses 10 and 11. We're talking about our sacrifice of love. Here we're told for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. It's a work and it's labor and it's something we're spread about and it's a sacrifice which he has showed towards his name in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we thank God you've done it in the past. You are still doing it now and you will still do it in Jesus name. God will be no man's debtor. Anything you give is going to multiply a hundredfold, a thousandfold is going to repay you in Jesus' name. You know, if I said that in CAC Church, if they invited me 
and then i told them that anything you give for the work of the lord that's where they believe prophecy and uh, i if i tell them the lord will provide for you and multiply it a hundredfold those people cc people uh, assemblies of god people if i said that there and they invited me specially to come and prophesy for them they are going to make their pocket they are going to turn it out and give everything they said the deeper life uh, generous superintendent by prophecy said whatever we give is going to multiply a hundredfold but when i come back home and i tell our people and i said whatever you give god is going to multiply a hundredfold when if i say in jesus name you just say amen in the natural <laughs> but this time you are going to believe prophecy yeah. and god will multiply a hundredfold in jesus name yeah. and you see when you pay tight for example malachi chapter 3 Malachi chapter 3, we're looking at it from verse 10. Malachi chapter 3, reading it from verse 10. Here we have the promise of the Lord. Of course, the commandment of the Lord to bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and put me now herewith, if I will not open the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I believe it's going to happen. As uh, you know, we contribute, make it a sacrifice, a sacrifice of love. And we're given. The Lord is going to repay everyone in Jesus' name. How much do we owe our Lord? Think about it. Your eternal life, your salvation, your peace of mind, your sanctification, your hope of getting to heaven, the resources you have, your family that you have, your children that you have, the health that you have, the protection that you have. We owe the Lord everything and then i see what has he done for us i see not forgiving our sins i see not treating our name in the book of life i see not prepared heaven for us is he not preparing us for heaven and eternal life did is he not laying up for us treasures eternal treasures what eyes have not seen what ears have not heard if he has done all that and is still doing all that then we need to do something for jesus worthy of his love and we will do it i said we will do it how will you feel when your master eventually comes? If you have to confess that you did nothing for him, but you kept your love shut up like a stagnant pool, not flowing a forth to his work, you will be ashamed on, on such a day. If he said, you could have done this, that, that year, you could have done this, that year. If you are taking that thing and you are put it where I wanted it, look at the resources I would have opened up for you and giving to the work and even giving to your family personally. And then we'll say, I've been a loser because of what I didn't yield, I didn't give up. We're not going to be like that. We're going to give, it's going to be a sacrifice of love and the Lord will bless us abundantly. Number three now is our suffering sufficiency in the lord our sufficiency in the lord second corinthians chapter three second corinthians chapter three reading from verse four and verse five and such trust we have through christ to god word not that we are sufficient for ourselves to think anything of ourselves but our sufficiency is of god you will find him to be sufficient all those things that uh, you have been given the goals and the things that were said and you are thinking ah will i make it you will go beyond it and where it appears to be nothing the lord will so provide for you it will surprise you and uh, you know somebody i uh, learned of two farmers uh, one was uh, not a real christian the other one was a christian and this christian was known to have a generous spirit apart from giving tithes he'll give to the poor give to the church give to everyone but the other fellow was you know holding everything guarding everything holding on to everything and did not have much and but the one that was giving was appearing richer than the other fellow and so it bothered the other farmer that's the unbeliever and he came to him and he said i don't understand your situation you all you are giving and uh, you know this is your christian faith you give to people you give to god you give to church you give every time and you are becoming richer than those of us who are not giving anything what is your secret oh then they said that uh, there's no deep secret here it says uh, you know they use the language of the farmer i shovel to god and he shovels back to me and so the other fellow reasoned a little and said that's all right if you shovel to god and he shovels back to you how is it you are getting richer than those of us who are not doing anything oh he says you don't understand god uses a bigger shovel than mine 
I use a small shovel and you know I push uh, the little thing on and then he just use a you know a, a shovel that his supernatural strength can carry a kind of shovel that you've never seen the size before and uh, that's what he wants you to do you shovel to God and then what will he do to me God bless you and so our sufficiency is in the Lord in 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 2nd Corinthians chapter 9 verse 8 and God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That ye always having, always having, there's no time you will lack. If you make that sacrifice of love, always having all sufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. There is no good work that the Lord has laid before us that he cannot provide for us to have sufficiency in all things. So we may abound unto every good work. God is our sufficiency better have god as your provider than have the bank of your country the bank of your state or your region as your possession the infinite riches of christ cannot be exhausted the lord will be no man's debtor it is ours to obey and give and then he will repay us i said a hundredfold before he will repay you a thousandfold Amen. let us learn the great lesson of the kingdom of god in watering others we ourselves are watered and to get, we must give. And uh, to make ourselves happy, we must make other people happy. And to become spiritually vigorous, we must see the spiritual good of other people. After all these things we are even talking about, is it not the possession of the Lord that he has given us? Does it belong to us? Does not everything belong to the Lord? Is it not out of what he has? We are taking a little and we are giving back to him in First uh, Chronicles. First Chronicles chapter 29, verses uh, 12 13 and 14 first chronicles chapter uh, 29 reading from verse 12 here we're told both riches and honor come of thee thou reignest over all in thine hand is power and might and in thine hand it is to make great and to give strength unto all now therefore our god we thank thee and praise thy glorious name but who am I? And what is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For of the things, for for all things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. That's what God is saying. He said, I bless that church, I bless that location, I bless your region, I bless your nation. Out of what I've given unto you, uh, can you show some, you know, love and can you reciprocate and bring a little so that we can reach the people that need to be reached. Now, when we do that, it will give us more blessings in Jesus' name. There is that scattereth and becometh richer. And but there's still there, there are people that hold on to too much and they become poor. We're going to release our funds and then the Lord is going to make everything sufficient for us in the family, in the church, and everywhere. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. He's a provider. And as he provides for us, he wants us uh, to make it ready, available for the work of the Lord. 